What's up, everybody? Welcome to the On3 Influencer Lever Up podcast. I'm Jim Cavell, the founder and CEO of Influencer. And I'm pumped today because, you know, if you've ever heard me talk about what I love about name, image, and likeness, it's not the millions of dollars that every athlete's going to make, it's the muscle that athletes work because of this new era in college sports that gets them to think about themselves as more than an athlete. But they get to do it while they're still playing, while they still have the jersey. They get to build a business and learn skills and make connections that will last well beyond their playing days. And there is no better example of that today than Sean Clifford, the quarterback for Penn State, who has started Limitless NIL, which is an awesome agency helping peers, college athletes, which Sean is still one of, build a business with NIL. So I have Sean Clifford here. We have Shannon Terry, the founder and CEO of On3. And uh, Sean, man, so excited to have you uh, with us today. And you heard me say it in the intro, um, NIL is great because of new skills. It's helping many athletes to learn. Um, You're one of those athletes. So let's just start there, man. Like you're building a business while you're leading a power five football program in the Big Ten. What's it like? No, it's definitely uh, it's a it's an interesting lifestyle, but I appreciate you, Jim and Shan, for having me on. I think that you know number one about NIL and what I've seen so far is is you, you hit it the nail on the head. It's it's the opportunity to be able to create a business, create an asset, and just be yourself um, in college, which is exciting for the first time ever um, to be able to do that. I think you know through the first year of NIL. Uh, we saw lots of ups and downs. You know, a lot of people called it the wild, wild west. But at the same time, um, it was it was on a lot of us athletes, us older athletes to figure it out. Um, and, and I think that we kind of are starting to bring it around, um, really understand what the the good, bad and ugly of this thing is and, and start to hone in. Um, you know, last year I had the first six months on my own with uh, my manager, who's now our CMO at Limitless NIL. His name is Trevor Robinson. Uh, we went through the whole year trying to figure it out, really understanding everything. And I, as an entrepreneur myself, I always have believed that you build skills over time and that's how you create a business or an asset. So I started off obviously as, as learning football, uh, learning the quarterback position, which brought leadership skills. Um, and then that went through high school, then translated into playing at the at Penn State in, in the Power Five. Um, had such a blessing to be here at Penn State. Uh, the fans, the uh, the electricity of the stadium, everything about it is just so fantastic. And then obviously with NIL dropping, I was in my third year starting. So I've kind of built all these skills and then I was able to convert finally on the name, image, and likeness. Did really well and um, you know, not to toot my own horn, but was able to create a steady revenue stream for myself of over six figures. So I figured that, you know, I now have built enough skills up to then hone in on other people's brands and other people's uh, name, image, and likeness. So that's when I created Limitless NIL. Um, It's a creative agency for the athletes, by the athletes, to be able to really help them and facilitate them um, to be their best selves because that's really what I want for everybody. I want them to be able to create whatever they want to do, um, for them. And, and that's the, the blessing that I always be, have been able to do over the past few, uh, few months, um, with limitless, um, just understand, build and grow every single student athlete that comes into our, our agency. We now have over 40 student athletes as clients, um, expanding at a high rate and now going to be taking on a lot new, um, endeavors as, as I graduate here. Um, well, I already graduated with my first degree, but now getting my second degree in broadcasting and then moving on to um, the next level and then obviously into the working world as well. So really excited about NIL, really excited about sports in general. I think that it's very new, um, but a lot of opportunity and a lot of opportunities specifically for student athletes and putting that power to them is the most important part. Yeah, Sean, um, unbelievable story. Um, you know, you're an incredibly rare position in that, you know, you're not just looking at this for the opportunity for you personally, which has been great, but you're, you're looking to serve others and build a business and, and potentially a long career in NIL. So when you look, I mean, I know it's still, we're in still an infinite state infancy stage here. When you look at these next three to four years, what do you think the biggest potential in NIL is as it relates to your organization? 
There's a lot for sure. I think that number one, it's what I based it off of. And that's the peer advisor program. So a little bit about what we built here um, with the peer advisor program. So Trevor was my peer advisor. He was a manager for me last year through the six months of my, my first season with NIL. Um, and it just took so much weight off my shoulders um, throughout the year. Cause that's really, you know, number one, the basis of what a manager or an agency should do for the student athletes, because Let's let's be honest. It's a student athlete that there's student student first, athlete second, and then NIL third. Um, but they need to be able to focus on those things. So that time management piece is so important. And I think that that's the one thing that we honed in on really well. Uh, we created a system of, of students and student athletes combining into one to be um, an internship based peer advisor program uh, where the peer advisors learn how to pretty much just grow as a manager. Um, you know, not negotiating deals specifically. That's what the agency does for, for our student athletes, but at the same time, able to, to help with scheduling, able to keep them on their deliverables. Um, and as this thing grows, develop a relationship that honestly can last a lifetime because that's the coolest thing. I've, you know, my peer advisor is now our chief marketing officer and one of my good friends. And I see it all the time with all the peer advisors that I've, I've talked to and, and also the peer advisors that are with the athletes. I hear stories from the athletes all the time. They're talking about how, you know, I just met my, my peer advisor in person for the first time. It was so cool. Or, um, you know, my peer advisor did this for me and, and, and it's really set my brand up for success. It's, it's, it's all about education and it's all about enhancing the student athletes experience and also bringing the student into um, the picture, uh, just a, you know, a, a student that's there to learn, um, and, and just give them a bit, a bit of a different experience. And it's also, you know, humanizing the student athletes as well, able to show their personality, show what they do outside of their sport. Because I think that, you know, with, with so much going on in the sports world, sometimes people forget, you know, that we are people too. And I think that with this program, it's something that I'm very proud of. Um, we've had a lot of success with, um, that's, you know, just one thing that I think that we could build on over time. Um, but something I'm super proud of and is really like the core of Limitless when, it, when, it, when I think about it. Sure. I think, you know, balance as you develop your career, you have more responsibility um, is something, you know, I've had to learn even more in my, my 30s um, than my 20s as an entrepreneur. Um, here you are, and you're in your early 20s you're still leading a football program at a high level. Um, so not just playing games, but workouts um, and, and doing well in the workouts because you're the leader. You got to lead by example, right? Um, film as a quarterback, having to invest a lot of time into film and understanding what each team's doing. And a lot of people know you have an agency, so you'll be scrutinized if you're not prepared on the film size, let alone the fact that you want to lead your team. Um, and, and then class and all the things you're doing to get another degree and now you're running a business too. Balance is like every minute for you. You've got a lot of responsibility. And I think it's an amazing um, skill to learn early, but I'm sure um, it's pretty intense right now. So talk about how to balance everything um, as you prepare for another conference battle coming up. And then at the same time, have all these other responsibilities. Yeah, no, for me, it's it's really about that balance, that key word um, balance, just because, you know, when it, when your schedule is, is as hectic as mine, um, and, and, and you both obviously know this, but it's all about scheduling, it's all about planning, it's all about making sure that your day is being taken care of from the jump, um, and, and making sure that you, you're taking care of that before the day starts, um, having a plan, um, attacking, um, from the, from the minute that you get up. And it's, it's really easy when you're passionate about everything that you do. And that's the one thing that I've, I've realized, you know, like, you know, it's a Monday, it's a Monday and I'm getting up at six 30, uh, start my day out with emails and then, you know, hopping on calls at eight, having team meeting at nine, um, you know, going throughout the day up till about noon, I'm usually taking, um, you know, doing limitless stuff. And then once noon hits, have lunch and then flip it right over to, to Penn State and football, getting my two hours of film before before practice, hitting practice, and then getting my film afterwards. Um, because like you said, Jim, I have to be a role model for my team. Um, I have to be a leader for this team and I have to set the example. So if I'm not doing it, why would anybody else? So realistically, it's all about time management. It's all about um, pursuing excellence. And, and, and the big thing for me 
is, is just trying to be your best self um, and enjoying what you're doing. Because a lot of people, um, they just aren't doing what they, what they love. Um, and, and the one thing that I know is I love sports. I love um, relationships and I love uh, the leadership aspect that it brings as well. So it's, it's one of those things where um, as a student athlete, you know, you have the schedule um, and you have to plan but it's just a little bit on steroids. But at the same time, I, you know, in, in my head, if I can set the example for one person and change somebody's life, it's it's a win in my books. Sean, I, I think even if there's no NIL, you're you're all about whole self and you would be researching business and entrepreneur is obviously in your blood. It's all the things here. Here's our, here's my take on it. I think one of the big positives of NIL is that athletes now you know, they're more apt to like start reading and learning and digging in because there's real money involved. I'm curious, and you give us a seat that we don't get, you know, you're, you're with what another hundred athletes, 90 athletes, plus, you know, the, the other, the other sports at, at Penn state and probably even either other schools. Are you seeing athletes now spend more time, pay attention more in classes, you know, reading more current events, you know, just, trying to be more than just an athlete because NIL is a motivator to do that? Are you seeing a fundamental change or no? I'm just curious. Absolutely. I think that that's, that's number one. And there's two sides to that story. There's the the present of, of what we're living in right now. And then also the future. Um, and I can speak on both. So for example, for the present, I tell this, this story specifically because it's funny and uh, I know he doesn't mind me telling it, but um, Jair Brown, he's a safety for us. He led this, the, 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 actually the NCAA in, in interceptions last year. Um, an absolute stud of a player. He was actually our first client at Limitless, believed in us, um, and one of my best friends. Um, but Jair is, and we refer to him as Tig, but Tig was talking to, to, to me and he, he came up to me first thing he said, uh, and this is when I knew NIL was really making a shift in college sports is he came up to me and, you know, I thought we were going to talk about, you know, coverage or, you know, the practice or whatever it was, but he came up to me and he was like, Hey, you, you see that new, uh, that new place downtown, uh, it, it's, it's brand new and it's for lease, you know, is that, is that something we could get into some real estate is, is something that we could check into. And I was like, Whoa, 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 take, you're telling me that you're, you, you want to get an investment, you want to do investments now. And, and really that right then and there, I understood that, you know, Jair had been with us for about a month and I, you know, was talking to him about my own entrepreneurial journey and what I was doing. Um, but already just from, you know, talking and, and sharing and, and, and being more business-like um, outside of the facility, instead of just playing video games or, or just hanging out, you know, really educating yourselves. It, the, the, the possibilities are, are, are limitless with, with, with what student athletes could do. So um, that was, you know, prime example of, uh, you know, the locker room shifting from, you know, what are you doing on a Friday night to how can I invest? How can I do this? How can I build an asset in college, which is super impressive um, on, on Jair's part to realize that and really try to change his life. And then I think the, the biggest thing and, and the thing that's not being talked about is the future of NIL. And, and, and the future that it brings for college athletes in their futures, because it's always the talk is, is once, once your sport is over, you have this identity crisis, but that doesn't need to be a thing anymore because, you know, for myself personally, you know, I, I'd love to play in the league for 15 years, be Tom Brady, have a bunch of Super Bowls. But all I know in the back of my mind is whenever this sport is done, I know that I am going to be completely fine with myself and my personal mental health because I just am so passionate about not only football, but also limitless and, and, and other ventures that I have going on. So just being able to surround myself with different things and, and stimulate my brain all day with a bunch of fun, different things, getting to talk to, to, to fantastic business people like, like you and uh, Shannon and Jim here. I mean, it's, it's just an absolute wonderful opportunity to be able to set yourself up for the future and not only set yourself up for the future monetarily, but more so for your mental, because that's something that everybody talks about is, is once you're done, you know, it's, it's that, it's that, you know, that depression or, or you know, not finding yourself. And, and now we're able to really do that in college and set yourself up for the future. And that's what the public needs to understand the most, in my opinion, is this doesn't need to be all about money. This needs to be about student athletes being able to find themselves outside of, outside of sport. And, and that's, 
you know, for me, it's been the most, that's been the best part by far. You know, uh, it, it's funny, your game at Auburn, I was fortunate to be on the sideline and, and uh, watch you guys come down and get a big victory over the Tigers and, um, you know, get a get a opportunity to work with both schools, both great programs, both so much uh, history. That game actually, I don't know if you knew this, Sean, it was the first time that Auburn had ever had a Big Ten team play at Auburn. So you're the, you're the first and only Big Ten team player. <laughs> um, but uh, my wife came with me and my wife's a, a big NFL fan. You know, she's from Boston, big, big Patriots fan. And uh, she's still trying to understand college football and why more people go to college games in most respects than pro. And there's all these fans. And, and so over the years, I've, I've taken her to a few games and we're standing there on the sideline. And before the game, the flyover happens, right? And, you know, three jets fly right over and, you know, powerful. You got almost 100,000 people there, big game. I look at her, I said, huh, what do you think? And she had the most profound statement back to me. She said, um, man, this is the peak of a lot of these kids' lives. And, you know, I think we overlook that a lot. I think we dehumanize college athletes a lot. I think we forget that from 18 to 22, some of the things that you experience when you make it to the level you've made it to could make it tough to top by the time you're 22 and you still have, if you're fortunate, 60 years left. And then you look at mental health and you look at what's going on right now in society. And there's a lot of contributing factors. It's not like this is the only one, but you could see how an athlete with an injury um, who didn't pan out and becomes that athlete that never made it or an athlete um, that was projected with five stars, but, but doesn't end up at the chart or whatever it is, could be in a state of depression. Social media contributes to it. There's a lot of other things. Talk a little bit to athletes right now about what you just said, because I think it's powerful. It's like, you're more than an athlete. And now you actually have a chance to practice that while you're still playing. And that could help you get through the transition that all of us who played college sports struggled to get through because our identity was with our position that we played in sports. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that, you know, your wife kind of hit the nail on the head there. Um, it is the peak of a lot of people's lives. And it, it's hard not to say it isn't because think about it. You're playing in front for me. Who's I, I, I cannot thank Penn state enough. I can't thank the fans. I can't thank coaching staff, the program, the team that I've had, the teams that I've been on. I can't thank everybody enough. You know, I, the, the experience that I've had in college, being able to play in front of 110,000 the game that I absolutely love um, and I dreamt of for years and years and years when I was a young football player. Tough to, t tough to top that sometimes, but at the same time, I think that with, with what I'm doing now, it has completely changed my perspective on those moments because it's not downplaying those moments whatsoever. Those moments are fantastic. Those moments are are indescribable. You know, you could tell, I, I, I can't describe what the whiteout is. It's just so fantastic. But at the same time, I know that with what I'm doing with Limitless, with what I'm doing with other um, investments and, and business ventures that I'm doing, um, meeting people like you guys, um, and, and just being able to explore everything that life gives, there are bigger peaks and you can find those bigger peaks as a student athlete. It's just tough sometimes because sports is what we do. We're told that we're student athletes all the time. You have to act this way. You have to do certain things on time all the time, schedule your day out and everything has to be about sport. And that is true for sure. To be the best that you want to be, you have to, you have to separate yourself. And I'm not downplaying that whatsoever, but in that free time, instead of just playing video games or instead of just stimul stimulating your brain on your phone or on social media, there's a lot more to be able to find yourself with. Um, and NIL has presented that opportunity to all of us as student athletes to, to really explore that. And I think that, you know, a lot of the money has come into play when it comes to what gets the news and what doesn't. But the big, the big key here is that student athletes can monetize their, their name, image, and likeness, but more so they can build their, their name, image, and likeness and make strides to become better people um, in, 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 their next, um, in their next endeavors past sports. So I think that, you know, it, 
NIL is, is the best thing to happen to college sports, in my opinion, because it opens up a lot more for student athletes specifically if taken advantage of. You just kind of segue, I think, into my next question. So what's the worst part, the worst thing about NIL? I mean, because, I mean, there's no mm -hmm. question. We're, we're big proponents of, of the opportunities it, pro it provides, and the unintended consequence, too, of the whole education and, and life skills development and all the things are off the charts. But what's the worst thing right now? Because we're still in this, you know, inefficient marketplace, and there's a lot, a lot of things right. going on. What's the worst? Yeah. I think, I think right now it's, it's lies being told, or I think it's, it's got to be a little bit, too, of, of – the egos that are being built in the high school era, in the recruiting area. That's, that's the part that is, is a little bit tough right now because you see it and you got to recruit hard, but now you're telling kids that they might get a, a certain amount of money if you come here and the collectives are playing to pieces as well. So it's with the younger athletes that I worry sometimes, how is this going to play out? Um, because it just gets, it, it's, it's nerve wracking a little bit because you know, schools are offer are, are able to kind of talk about what their NIL at their school looks like specifically. And a lot of it is around money and that value, which because it is important. Let's not be wrong here. But at the same time, I just hope that as student athletes and, and you know, young high school athletes, they understand that there is more than just the money, you know, building your brand and creating an asset. Because the, the problem is that the, the coaches, you know, Coach Franklin will be a, a ride or die for me to the to the day I die. But the thing is that once I leave here, me as a as an athlete doesn't it doesn't need to concern him anymore. Specifically, he has other things to worry about, as he should. So realistically, it's about building yourself up so that way when that time comes when you do leave, and if it doesn't go the way that you think it should, you're prepared for that. And I and I hope that high school athletes are preparing. I think that there's a lot of good people out there educating high school athletes right now. Um, but that's the only part that worries me a little bit. All right. So we're we'll wrap it up. And I got a question that I've always wanted to ask you. We've talked about it a little bit um, before. I talked about it a lot this past week. Uh, I spoke at the Michigan Sports Business Conference about this. And we had Hunter Dickinson talk about it a little bit with me in the athlete's chair and perspective like you are. But it, from my perspective, um, your last answer has a lot to do with um, setting unrealistic expectations for future college athletes and the danger in doing so. We saw the post um, on July 1st, 2021 by tens of thousands of athletes, which basically was a, a viral post that was reposted tens of thousands of times and it said, you know, the NCAA is allowing me to make money with my name, image and likeness. And so I want everyone to know my DMs are open for business, right? Like as if a bunch of money was just going to show up the next day and NIL is that easy. You talk about recruiting and conversations where coaches might be promising things based on opportunities on campus. Um, the other side of this is right now is quite possibly the golden era um, the best it'll ever be for a college athlete. You obviously get your tuition paid for. You have amazing perks when it comes to, um, you know, chefs in the kitchen, barber shops in the locker room, unlimited gear, shoes, sneakers, cleats, whatever. Um, you get a 3.0 now, you get an educated related benefits check at most schools, about three grand a semester. Cost of attendance and stipends. Um, as long as you're not making too much with your NAL, if you come from um, a lower income background, you get a Pell Grant that you get to use toward your college experience. Um, and all of these are, are aside from NIL, are non-taxable. Um, if athletes were to become employees, um, not only would the money being used for Title IX um, run amok with money that would be used for payroll for athletes, but a lot of those things would have to be paid for by athletes. Now, I'm not asking you to come on here and take a stance one way or another. Uh, I'm not gonna do that to you right now, but what I do wanna ask you to do is talk about what you and other athletes are aware of in this conversation. Because I think some athletes might think having employee status is a good thing when actually it could be a very bad thing. And, you know, one other thing I didn't mention that's really important to this before I, I have you answer the question is, Right now, in addition to all those perks, all that tax-free 
uh, stuff and NIL, you can be a free agent every year and join the transfer portal. But if you become right. an employee, you can be terminated if you don't perform. So add that to all the factors I mentioned. But what do athletes know? What do you know about that? What's the conversation without me or anyone else in the room about becoming employees amongst athletes? Yeah. Yeah, I think that there's a steady diet of it um, in the in the summertime, in the in the downtime during the you know the end of spring ball uh, conversations like that coming up. I don't think it's something we need to worry about just yet, um, just because there's so many moving parts, and you really do want to keep it as a student athlete. You you want to protect that eligibility, and you want to protect that 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 academic that scholarship piece as much as possible, um, but. Eventually, you never know. You you really never know. And and for me, it's it it goes both ways. You, obviously, I think that there's ways that we can make this a, a paid opportunity with 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 playing college sports. I think that there that's that's an, that's something that could be handled. But you know, for us right now, we, we are living our best lives. That's for sure. You know, you have you, you have all the food that you need. You have the housing. You get. The stipend checked. Now you're getting some money from collectives. You're getting money from different brands. So there's a lot of different um, different ways that you can succeed right now um, monetarily. So I don't know what the what the complete answer is. I know that we need to. It, it starts in the roots of education because realistically, you know, every college student needs to learn more when it comes to finances. I think that that's one of the keys that is going to need to be relayed more in college is, is educating people a little bit more on real life um, instead of just, you know, what happened in, in 1855 or whatever it might be. Um, but I think that that's kind of where we're heading. I think it's also a little bit, I, one of the things that we talk about is establishing yourself as an LLC or a business because you can do that. Um, you know, creating specifically your brand as a business. So that way you're separating your brand and, and your, your identity. Um, so that way, if anything would happen with that brand part or that business part, you're prepared for it and, and you can kind of fight that legal battle or anything that might come up um, separate from yourself. Um, I think that that will help as well. I know that, you know, when it comes to, for example, international students, I know that that's a conversation piece right now is can, can they create an LLC so that way they can get paid in the States and then, you know, contract themselves out as an employee for, for, for their own business. Um, you know, that's a, that's a piece that we've talked about in the locker room with our, you know, the guys from Canada and the guys from, um, you know, not from the United States. Um, but realistically, it's, it's not talked about enough yet. And I think that the education piece definitely needs to happen. I know that Penn State does a really good job of, of bringing in some, some, some specialists and, and, and people that, you know, specialize in those specific areas. Um, but I think it's just building on it over time and really educating. No doubt. Well, I appreciate you making time for us. I know you're getting ready uh, for another big matchup in the Big Ten. And, you know, it means a lot that you would share some of your uh, off the field philosophies, I think not just with our fans, um, but also other athletes to see. I think there's a lot to learn from this. So really appreciate you making the time for us, Sean. Yeah, unbelievable job. And I just have one question for you. So you graduate, well, I know you're, you're graduated, but any thoughts of coming to work for on three? I, I think we could um, <laughs> maybe get something done. I know a guy there that maybe can pull a few strings, but uh, you have open employment career with our company anytime young man unbelievably i, I appreciate i appreciate that yeah. shannon i really do anytime i'm being serious yeah, I, right now i'm gonna jim gonna give you my <laughs> phone number we're gonna talk you gotta come work for come work with us hey hey i you know i i'll just add that to the slate of things that i'm doing right now for sure. <laughs> we're talking unbelievable yeah <laughs> i love it all right Thanks again, Sean. Good luck in your next game, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you both. We appreciate you tuning in to the Lever Up podcast, available right now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So make sure you subscribe, and make sure you subscribe to both the On3 and Influencer YouTube channels, where you can catch all the video content, cut-ups, mash-ups from all of the Lever Up podcasts. And of course, follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well, at On3 and at Influencer. Thank you so much for tuning in today and stay tuned for more great guests to come 
on the Lever Up podcast.